All right, YouTube, today we're going to be breaking down the final couple of hills in the game one Karashi hardpoint. A little comeback that we went on to go up 1 0 in the COD Champs Grand Finals against New York. This is a pretty big map just because it set the tone for the entire series. Obviously, this is our map pick going into it. So we started bad side. Uh, it was kind of, you know, back and forth. And then they kind of took a little bit of lead going to the second rotation. And we ended up making a comeback on this last P1 to P2. So I wanted to take you guys through the minds of what we were thinking, uh, especially Ken, because, you know, he put on that bandana and actually turned into a different monster especially on this map and especially in the hard points in the grand finals so uh let's take a look at uh you know some of these plays that we were making especially ken uh going into these last two hills so to start off obviously they get the scrap time on this p5 uh we weren't able to make a full-on break uh we were able to make it a little bit mixy but they were able to get this last 20 seconds so uh the big thing for the the p1 rotation going into you know karachi second or third p1s is always you know it can be a really big hold as long as you keep everything controlled and, and make sure that you pick up the lanes that you need to. So uh, the big thing here for us is we want to get rotation uh, to this P1 and starting to get, you know, top three uh, right side control and, you know, found control so they can basically cover everything going into this p1 so we only really have to worry about you know our top fire and our middle cut it's just so easy to cover those two once you have everything else on the rest of the map so for us that's what we're thinking here you know number one and number three trying to work up to this top ac top third control you know number six is pushing out this front uh p5 area basically pushing out towards the bus stop because what they want to do is trying to make sub type of moves uh in this direction to try and you know stop us from having such a tight you know, controlled P1 with us having top AC and top third. You know, I always talked about uh, the, the fountain route that people would do off of old P5 where, you know, you go low lights, you go through short up to fountain, basically kill anyone that's top AC and maybe even get a kill top third and start, you know, either flipping things out and or making things mixy. So uh, I made a video about that and that's exactly what, you know, Ken is thinking here. So we get this kill towards coop side. Ken realizes himself, you know, we've died short area and we don't have that covered anymore because, you know, Brandon is climbing up towards this top class area, but we don't have uh, this fountain route. The one that, you know, that always these these top teams are going to be taking is at the end of these P5. So this is what Ken realizes in the moment because, you know, AG is already top three. So it's on it's on Ken to pick this up. So he goes low cash uh, to bottom fountain here, making sure that he has this picked up. He's going to be able to get a free kill on Dante and also, uh, you know, Paco is still top fire over here. So first he's going to get this kill on Dante. And we knew that Paco was on this side of the map as well because we knew that they were bumping uh, their guys frontwards because we didn't see every, anything else on the rest of the map. And we know uh, that they're going to be trying to go through the front of P5 uh, to try and break onto this P1. So that's why Ken is playing this way. So, you know, he gets this kill on Dante, but he is also expecting another kill. You know, he throws this trophy. He's, he's waiting for some type of challenge Paco. Now he, you know, jumps over to the other side of the door. He finally sees Paco. Paco starts shooting and, uh, you know, Ken's able to just strafe back into the door, get a free kill. That two piece is so massive because now, you know, we have initial control over the time. Uh, we're able to get our, our guys inside time as well, not only just controlling, you know, the middle of the map, but also we're able to make sure that we're still having you know coop side control now they can't break from short or top fire um, they could also you know take a deeper route here but ken is also looking for this as well see caesar's guys uh in the pov over here you know ken is still uh, aware of this gunfight you know he actually doesn't get killed over here somehow he doesn't he's getting wall banged to hell but he is able to stay alive and it's actually huge for him to stay alive there because it just makes everything so much more controlled ants able to get his help from the top fire window ag won his gunfight towards coop we'll, we'll back up to that he wins his gunfight towards coop so now everything is controlled once again and and you know the biggest thing for us here is as long as you can make sure that you know where they're spawning on the p1 and you just keep them uh, you know in front of you everything should be smooth sailing because it's so easy to pick up things once you have you know the middle map control once you have top fire and once you have you know top third like this ken refills top three after ag dies towards coop he gets a kill on kismet he also knows that ag died to paco at the third stairs over here so as you'll see here you know ag is holding this cut Paco goes, kills him. So once Ken kills Kismet, he knows that that was the second guy. He knows that Hydra was in front of him or in front of Kismet, I should say. And he knows he has to play for him. So he's looking for Hydra right here. He doesn't know where he is. He could be anywhere on this right side of the map. He reads him low scaff. 
big kill. Now we have full four down. We know where everyone's at. They're spawning back B3. So, you know, Ken's going to go back over here towards the, you know, the top scaff area. And he is going to throw his nades, try and disrupt them as much as possible. Uh, you know, AG once again refills top three after coming off a spawn because we have everything else covered. He's just filling in the right area for us. You know, Ken has the right side. We have our mid cut. We have our top fire push in case they were flanking this way or it spawned towards uh, the useless side. And as you'll see here, they're, they're starting to push through this right side of this, this top third side to try and get top third control to break back on in because there's still 30 seconds on this. But the big thing here is where they're going to spawn. So, you know, Ken is playing his streak. This is this is a big streak here, by the way, too, because, you know, he's on a fiver. He gets another kill because he's just finessing his life. All he has to do is just hard play this. He's either bound to get Skies or Kismet uh, for sure with, the, with a guaranteed one. And, you know, he does get the kill, but does get trade out. But, you know, he gets the streak. That's the most important thing. He gets streak going into P2. And to talk about the spawns here for New York, it's really important um, what you'll see here with the spawns. So they're going to start getting scoop spawns over here. So it's kind of like a, a squad spawn drag from Skies, getting them these coop spawns. And the big thing here is uh, going into P2, you do not want to be spawning coop. Because if you're spawning coop, that means the other team knows basically what type of routes you're going to be taking. You're going to be trying to take a longer route. You're going to be trying to take routes through fountain. You know, it's probably the easiest if you spawn useless and can just cut right away towards new, having that quick, quick route, um, you know, just going straight through bottom ticket. But once you're spawning coop over here, obviously longer distance, you know, you're going to have to take longer routes. And this is so huge for the break because obviously we're still flooding towards the time here, short top fire. We see that a lot of them are coming towards this AC tide. You know, Ken even uses a streak. He knows uh, with that streak that, you know, Paco's also taking this route over here. So he's going to be the one to play for, you know, this back alley route once, you know, they get set up on new. But because of the squad spawns, they're going to continue to get these coop spawns. And it's just so, so free for us because, you know, obviously if they had spawned useless, they get that quick route to the hill. Now they're spawning coop. It's like a dagger situation for them because they have to take these routes, you know, through old P1, through fountain or through, you know, back alley or long. And as you'll see, we're just set up for that. We're, we're, you know, cutting fountain. We're cutting P1. We're watching our back alley. And, you know, the only thing we really weren't watching in this moment was long. And there was one guy who was Kismet who went top dome to top plat. So, you know, this wasn't covered, but it was the only blind spot. And we can just adjust to that in case we don't get kills elsewhere. Uh, but we do get kills towards P1. We get a kill towards this back alley because Ken's looking at it. He knew with the streak, obviously, that Paco was taking this route. And finally, Brandon picking up this Kismet kill, getting the trade on you know AG's death and that was a big kill too just because uh, it makes everything so much more controlled because if, if he would have died here Kismet would have been able to have a one-on-one -on -one gunfight with uh you know Ken on the hill and you know with them also being able to spawn closer breaking from long and breaking from this back alley uh, they probably could have broken back on in and there was a chance for them to actually retake control and maybe even win off this hill because they would have enough time to I believe there's still you know 40 plus second yeah 45 seconds over here you know if they had broken on into this because Ken was the only one here there was a good chance that they actually you know still hold on to this and possibly even win the game right here on this p2 so Brandon's kill was huge and then they just worked together on these last few team shots uh, last guy live in this cubby corner Ken slides on him we get the win um, bandana Kenny goes absolutely massive and I liked how much control we had during the p1 going into the p2 that p1 was such a big hold for us obviously to you know win the game but you know the plays that Ken was making and the plays that we you know as a team were making to fill in the right areas uh, were basically perfect so that was a great start going into the grand finals with that 1-0 lead thank you guys for watching this video hope you guys enjoyed the analysis and I'll see you guys in the next one